the tagline for the Toyota High Rider is, it's high time. And I would certainly agree so because you see Toyota are the pioneers of strong hybrid technology and are actually quite well known even in India but they haven't really leveraged on that strength. Yes we have the Camry strong hybrid but that's at the higher end. All that though is going to change now with this the Urban Cruiser High Rider. Now those of you who are fans of the Autocar India channel and are keeping in touch with the news, you'll know that this version also has or this car also has a Maruti Suzuki counterpart. It, it in fact is built on a Suzuki platform and so has the mild hybrid engine as well. Also all wheel drive, so quite a few unique things. But what we have here with us today is the strong hybrid. So what are we waiting for? Let's get straight to it. Now over at the front, as I was saying, you know, the Toyota and the Maruti versions, there will be two versions and they're quite different. As you can see, the Toyota has this nice slim uh, sort of treatment uh, up here. These are in fact the DRLs, two DRLs here, which sort of encase this chrome strip that runs right across. There's an acrylic carbon fiber patterned panel here. Looks quite nice. The headlights are down below here. And let's move over to the side now. Now over at the side, uh, the profile, as you can see, very upright, more SUV-like. You've got these very strong, squarish wheel arches. Give the car a nice kind of stance. We'll move over, of course, to the rear. At the back too, you've got the Urban Cruiser High Rider badging. Hybrid here, this is the V-grade, which is the top trim. And in terms of styling, I really like this kind of treatment. You know, you have the surface coming down and flaring out here so you have this horizontal plane looks quite nice and eye-catching and in fact lends it a nice sporty touch so i'm going to open the boot now because i'm sure you've been dying to see what happens to the boot space yes as you can see the strong hybrid has a sort of false flow here it's essentially to accommodate the large battery over here in terms of liters it's 255 liters cargo capacity not a real lot and uh, the mild hybrid version which you know has the smaller battery has 355 what you can do though is fold down the 60 40 split seats use of course this little cubby here there are some cubbies in the side as well if you really want to hide some cargo and what that does though is the spare tire that's down below Now over here at the rear, as you can see, I'm quite comfortable. Space is really ample. This seat is adjusted to my driving position. I'm about five foot eight and I have plenty of knee room. There's a lot of leg room and I can stretch out under the seats as well too. So that's really nice. The only uh, issue or really if you're taller, if you're about six foot, you'd find the top of your head brushing uh, because as you can see, I've got only about maybe two or three finger gap to the head liner. Ambience though is really quite nice. Uh, it looks nice and open and airy. The windows are quite large and you've got this panoramic sunroof. In fact, uh, both panels do open up as well, not just the one in front. Now, in terms of features at the rear, you've got uh, twin AC vents, so you can direct them to the left and right and two USB ports. You also have a flip down armrest with some cup holders and three head restraints. <laughs> Now over here at the front, I really like the layout. It looks quite nice. Everything is chunky, well laid out. In fact, the eagle-eyed among you will spot a lot of familiar bits from the Brezza. And that's because, as I said, this shares the same platform and there's a lot of component sharing also. And that in some ways is actually a very good thing because you've got a nice chunky steering wheel with uh, switches here that, you know, operate with a nice feel. You also have these little toggle switches for your climate control, which I really love because I really hate it when you have the climate control integrated into the touchscreen. Speaking of which, this is the nine inch touchscreen, the larger unit running, of course, Toyota's uh, system here. Uh, it's got, of course, the eye connect. Yeah, it also has Toyota on board, as you can see. So if you say, hey, Toyota or hi, Toyota, you will have the voice assistant coming up. We don't need that for now, though. 
so moving on with the rest of the cabin of course you've got down here uh, buttons for the EV mode and drive mode drive mode has eco sport and normal and you have ventilated seats as well Looking around the cabin too, things look really nice and well finished. The texturing here I really like. There's a soft touch material on the dashboard too. And this sort of satin silver finish looks quite nice and upmarket. All in all, it's a very pleasing ambience and a very pleasing interior. You've also got a fully digital dial or rather you don't have dials. You have dials on the mile hybrid version. This one has a full digital readout. In fact, you don't even have a tachometer. All you get is power, eco and the charging indicator. And you also get an HUD, which once I turn on, you'll see pops out from here and displays things like your speed, navigation and also the state of charge and the whole electrical drive system as well. So that's really quite handy to have and a safe feature as well. The other notable features are a 360 degree camera, reclining rear seats and three point seat belts for all rear passengers. The Highrider has two power plants, a mild and a strong hybrid. The former puts out 103 horsepower, while the strong hybrid has a total system output of 116. So they are at par with others in the segment, but not close to the levels of the more powerful turbo versions of the Creta and Kushak, which make in excess of 140 horsepower. Toyota is clearly chasing efficiency and claim high figures of 19.39 km per litre for the all-wheel drive mild hybrid and 27.97 km per litre for the strong hybrid. Also interestingly is the acceleration. Now on path throttle it's just fine you know overtaking like this, quite easy, quite effortless. Put your foot down like this yeah and you'll go by and you can see you know sometimes uh, the engine and the battery will both come in now. As I said, this is a strong hybrid. Toyota says in the typical Indian driving cycle, you should be about 50% to even 60% of the time driving with the engine off. Now, that's really impressive again for fuel efficiency. And as far as driving, for example, right now, I have, you know, uh, just the batteries providing me power. It's really fine. I can do a slow, gentle overtake. But if I want some, you know, more, put my foot down, engine switches on, and you get going quite smartly. So on the move, you thus have a hybrid mode where both battery and engine provide power, an EV mode with power coming from only the battery, a charging phase which uses coasting or braking energy, and a charging phase where the engine charges the battery and powers the car too. Now we did time the car, not to our test standards of course, but in eco mode, it does have drive modes, uh, in eco mode it was about 13.8 and uh, in power mode, which is the fastest mode of the three, uh, it was 12.5 seconds for the 0 to 100. So it's not really bad. But of course, it isn't that punchy SUV kind of feel that, you know, you get from, let's say, the Creta Turbo or even the XUV uh, Petrol. So we've been driving on the highway for a while now. And what I've noticed is that keep a very light throttle and you can motor along uh, in electric mode only. But if you just go past, well, maybe even 10 or 15 percent, the engine does switch on and you can hear it, it's audible. You put your foot down, you know, and you can hear the revs rise, but you don't get that much of increase in speed. So in a way, you know, it's really wasted uh, the effort and the fuel efficiency. So throttle down, I would say only when you really, really needed to pull off an overtake or something like that. Now another advantage of having a strong hybrid is in slow moving traffic when you come to a full halt like this. You know the engine of course is already shut down sometimes. And when you set off, you're setting off on electric only mode so you don't have that engine coming on. You can't really feel 
or hear anything and it's all nice and silent and smooth so uh, really driving in the city is actually a very smooth enjoyable experience you know you've got the automatic so you don't have any clutch work your start stop system well it really doesn't stop at any time because you're always under ev power so keep a light foot and driving in the city is really quite enjoyable as much as well traffic can be Moving on to the ride and handling, the High Rider impresses with good body control as well as grip around corners, and it also delivers good ride quality. So we are going over some bad stretch right now, typically broken tarmac and a few odd potholes. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with the ride. In fact, uh, it's soaking up everything really quite nicely. You see that pothole I just went through. Really didn't upset the car, and it doesn't transfer too much. You can hear it though, but you can't feel it as much. Over the uh, brittle surfaces, you can feel a sort of uh, little uh, overinflated kind of feel from the suspension. But when you come to you know broken tarmac, larger potholes like like right now, you'll really appreciate the suspension because it's soaking up everything quite nicely and delivering a really nice, comfortable ride. So, does the High Rider have what it takes to succeed in the mid-size SUV segment? Clearly, it's not for those who want a punchy and peppy car, and there's no diesel on offer. But if priced well, between 10 and 19 lakhs, the strong hybrid's efficiency can be a good alternative to a diesel's fuel sipping manners. And Toyota is pulling out all stops in other areas. The High Rider is well equipped, it rides well, and it offers a strong hybrid, a mild hybrid, as well as all-wheel drive which are completely segment unique. So clearly, while Toyota has taken its time getting to this segment, it has come in very well prepared.